I want to do a demonstration drawing of how to handle some of the things we discussed last night in the class regarding, you know, fabric and, and folds and drapery. So I'm going to start drawing. I, I've put down a, a basic sketch of the shape just to give you a, an idea of, of what the, you know, give me a head start so, we, so you will, if you will. Um, once I have the head start, I'm going to work over the top of it and I'm going to kind of map it. And this is a diaper fold that I have and I'm going to show you an image of it in a PowerPoint so you can see it, but that's a diaper fold where it kind of crimps right here. I'm working right now with a 4H pencil. I started with a really light pencil and I'm going to push very, very lightly on it. Hard enough for you to see what I'm doing, but not, not overly hard. So right now I'm basically mapping it out. These are pipe folds over on the left-hand side, being kind of loose with it. I was identifying peaks before. Let me show you some peaks. So this is the high point. There's a second point in here that's another high point here. There's the point where the diaper fold kind of pushes forward. Now I'm working with an HB pencil, but I'm touching very lightly with it at this point. I'm not pushing very hard. That's the shape of the diaper fold, which I think is important to capture. Since I'm here, I'm going to identify this as just one shape, and I'm going to work with it a little bit. Here's a shadow. So I'm going to build off it as I go. following a line down, following a crease that gives me a second line, creates another form. It's gonna actually go a little lower than I've originally drawn it. Um, I wanna drop it down a little bit. If you'll notice, I'm actually just gonna move what I have down and it'll change the shape slightly, but I can just easily eliminate that without any problem at all. Outside edge, you know, your low points here, outside edge here, kind of folds in here. There's another point there, travel to here. I mean, these are, I'm making these dark, but I would not normally. I'm doing this just to make an instructional video. Wrap. Ask yourself questions as you look at the fabric. What's it physically doing? This is a, a fold that kind of wraps under. There's a little bit of a highlight here. And then the fabric actually reappears here and then creases back and heads that way. And then there's a curve shape here, a twist that settles here and then back out. I'm going to go back up in here a little bit and show you some of the things I was talking about last night as we were working. I'm just identifying a direction and I'm going to hatch it in that direction. And this is very early superficial mark making. It won't be there when I finish this drawing, but it's there to help me kind of like establish a value for some, for, for a form. Now I switch to a slightly darker pencil. I'm gonna stare real hard at that section right now. And I'm looking for connections. I'm looking for creases and folds. I'm realizing that this, that's not really that useful. It was there just to give me an idea of where it went, not to identify anything. 
There's a pinch here. I'm going to finish a section off a little bit. I'm just going to really work this top section and I'll let you watch me as I go. This is a hard black pencil I'm now doing. I'm now using. So you can see the difference between the 4H and the HB. Because I drew it so uh, lightly with an H pencil, I don't have to worry about putting my hand down on the drawing at this point. I'm not going to pick anything up. I may want to shorten my stroke where it gets a little tighter. And I might even want to change the direction a little bit. I'll look inside this section for where it's darker. And it's darker here where it kind of overlaps. I'm gonna go with a sharpened HB. I'm gonna push a little harder now. And I'm gonna go fast. Show you another option. So instead of making an individual strokes, I'm just making one connected stroke. I'll open it up a little bit so you see what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, but I'm doing it closer together. And I'm just shading within the area. But I didn't quite go all the way to the top here. Or to, I should say to the bottom of that. I want to keep that a little bit lit. There's a reflected piece of light that happens in there. And the fabric that I'm drawing is actually silk. So it is very reflective. It's a deep fold back up towards the top. It's close to the light source a little bit. As far as where the light is coming from, the light is actually coming from... that direction and heading across it. It's a really tight pinch. Now this line here does not exist, all right? It's just there as a guide, mar a guide marker for, for traveling from this high point to that high point, from that peak to that peak. It's gonna go away now. This line was to take me to the center or to the axis, or, or where that, that fold actually takes place in my space. So in it, um, by that I mean between these two points. So it's a little bit closer to the right than it is to the left. I'm gonna turn my hand a little bit because this fold is now going that way across. I'm gonna start looking for some incidents that happen here where there's a little bit of a, uh, a crease or a little bit of a wrinkle. Now, last night I talked a little bit about sealing off this kind of serrated edge that I had on, on my hatching. So that, that line, it's very similar to what I'm actually working here. And it actually, I'm, I'm putting it in lighter than I need, or darker than I need so I see it, but lighter than it's actually gonna wind up being once I work it some more. What I always tell people is that the last line you see on the surface is the line that the viewer reads, the fir reads first.
Now, if you see a deep shadow, what that implies is on the other side of the deep shadow, there's gotta be a crease to make it. And that means that there's gonna be a highlight here, but that doesn't mean that there's not necessarily gonna be gray on the other side of that highlight. It's kind of like push and pull. If you push a fold up, it's gonna get higher, but it's gonna block some of the light by doing that. So you're gonna get both ends of the spectrum. You're gonna get a dark point and you're gonna get a highlight. And then you're gonna get more of the natural shade of the, of the, uh, the cloth here. See how short my strokes are as I go? I might actually do that like that because it's, it's more convenient to actually move it in that direction. I'm just looking for shapes right now inside this little V shape that I found, this little diaper fold. Let me kind of map a little bit more for you. Lots of different directions. Last marks, direction of the curve. And even if I do this, even if I take an eraser and I wanna soften that a little bit, I'll make the eraser marks kind of fall in, fall in line with the rest of it. So that's a little bit of a start I'm gonna do a second video on top of this where I work a little bit more on some other sections, but I wanted to give you like a start and how I would lay it out. Just to review, you're gonna look for peak points or, you know, bottoms and tops. You're gonna to look for major incidents, you know, like where's the drama? There's a diaper fold. There's some pipe folds here. There's a crease that happens from the diaper fold kind of sitting down, you know, and it kind of wraps or it kind of twists a curve that occurs, and then that casts down. And it actually sits down on top of the table here. There's another uh, point of interest, which would be a, a border to the right. So I've mapped out a little bit of the major, the major incidents. I've identified my light source, and now I'm gonna kind of work another section, kind of build it up so it's even. I'm not gonna change my pencils around a lot. I mean, I'm using an HB and a 4H right now, to start it. I might use darker pencils as I go, but I want to keep it kind of even so I can see the way that it, you know, I want to see it as a whole. I want to see the way that it lays itself out. So that's my start for this. And this is my start for the drapery drawing.